Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Artist Interview Series. This is Pearson here, and today's guest, we have Howard Lawrence. How are you doing today, Howard? Great. How are you? I am doing pretty good. Got a little, got a little dry mouth. It must be it's like dry in the house, so I'm thinking, I think I need to, uh, to turn on the uh, humidifier and let that kind of run its course so it's making my my esophagus a little coarse if you know what i'm saying from all from being really dry yeah yeah it happens yeah so howard tell me about your art okay i'm uh uh pretty much a realist not a photorealist but uh realist style um mostly uh almost all watercolor some charcoal a little bit of pencil um i do a lot of uh things that i find from nature uh, animals bugs plants trees uh, some landscapes uh, pet dogs um, a little bit people um I'd say I do a fairly good job, still learning, but uh, uh, could be true for a lot of us. Of course, it's a it's a lifelong endeavor, wouldn't you say? Yes. Yeah. Um, um, I did not go to art school. I have had some training. I'm uh, a uh, student member at a uh, very old, relatively old Chicago art institution, the Palette and Chisel Academy. Um, I have a, a wonderful art storefronts website. Yeah. Um, so it says, I, I, I heard that you had, had a really big sabbatical with your art. Why? Like you said, like a giant break. What happened? Like a lot of people, I wasn't sure. Uh, there were several reasons. I had no certainty of a future in art uh, when I was young. Not mm. that I'm old now, but uh, uh, when I was an undergrad, I had taken some art courses. Uh, I did very well in them. Uh, but there was very little uh, cohesion between the art school people and me. Uh, and while they liked my work a lot uh they never there was never uh nobody ever reached out to me why don't you come to the art school or rather than major and whatever so i went off had a job had a career and in the last few years i've gone back taking courses and now producing quite a bit of art and having basically my own art gallery uh, online where'd you get your undergrad in Biology, math. Biology and math? Yeah. Which one do you like more? It was far and away more towards biology. Yeah. What fats fascinated you with biology? Like what specific were you specifically were you intrigued by? The whole concept of studying this is gonna sound kind of trite or you know, this is biology, studying living things. Uh, that you could look into and see what made a specific part of a animal or plant uh, work, go on, tick, uh, you name it. What makes when, us? What makes us uh, keep going? When you were uh, uh, in college, getting your biology on, what animals did you dissect or or uh, or? Uh, research or uh do some uh, uh microscoping whatever you call it uh this is going back quite a while uh the corn uh, the corn blight in the early 70s i was working in a lab that did research on corn blight what's corn blight just like we're having a uh this uh, virus going around the world now there was a great fear that the corn crops were going to be totally wiped out by this thing called corn blight. 
uh, really? in the early 70s. Um, corn, I, I haven't really followed it since then, but corn, at least at that time, was what you call a monoculture. Uh, just all the same genetic, the same uh, uh, the same uh, thing, the same corn everywhere. Therefore, all of it susceptible to the same disease. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, um, corn blight was spreading. Uh, I'm not sure how it was defeated. I really don't remember. Uh, but there was a lot of research going on about what is corn blight, how to defeat it, and so forth at the time in the early 70s. Um, I mean, look, just like, uh, like it or not, uh, the virus that's going around the world today to a lot of people, was not, it was not a surprise that a disease broke out and did this, went around the world, a new disease. There's been fears of organisms and diseases like this uh, in the scientific medical community for decades. So, uh, uh, Howard, uh, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I don't think we, you can talk about the virus, but I don't think you can actually state the name of it uh, because it could be flagged. Uh, on online, I just heard uh, that, that. Got that's it. The I case. will avoid that. So you can just what's that? No, I, I understand what you're saying. I, yeah, I, I'm not getting controversial here. No, no. I mean, I'm, 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 I, I don't personally. Uh, I'm neutral in that, but like, uh, from what I understand, is like we, if we state these, the, the, the title, like, there's AI just kind of searching through it and saying, hey, you I can't see that. That's fine. Um, but um, corn blight. How how is um uh, I know we're talking we're supposed to be talking about art but I think there's I think it makes it a little bit more interesting to kind of lift the veil about the artist a little bit more yeah uh, as opposed to just kind of talking about like the the uh, the symbolism or what what makes you tick as an artist um how has corn changed since the seventies I know that they they've like manipulated it enough that this keeps mutating are they make new uh, variations of it is that true I don't know I'm not, okay I'm not really I'm not a corn scientist I uh, really don't know uh, just, I just know in general um, it's more like in the lab where I was working I was given a job I tried to do it I, I was not one of the researchers I wasn't one of the thinkers mm -hmm. uh, but in general I um, I'm not sure how corn has changed. Uh, yes, they're kind of, I know that uh, they're constantly on the search for new strains and varieties that will produce more nutritious, uh, easier to grow uh, varieties of many different types of crops. Uh, that unfortunately also has its own controversies, and I'm not going to get into that either. Uh, yeah. Who heard, who would have, who would have thunk that corn? would be controversial you can answer that or not it doesn't matter no I mean, it's look i could really get thoughtful about that one that uh, unfortunately um um uh food has been used as a weapon and an emblem uh, of different cultures and ethnicities for for centuries yeah. Um, the different uh, foods have been associated with uh, different peoples. Um, uh, have you ever had herring? What's that? Herring. H e w r i n g. Herring. Uh, uh, that, that sounds familiar, but I don't believe I have. <laughs> okay. It's a, basically it is a European pickled fish. Okay. Uh, which is found mostly, say, around the Baltics, North Sea, something like that. I saw a map of Northern Europe with different varieties of herring matched up with which people would like it. The Danes would like this, Poles like that, Lithuanians would like this, uh, different varieties of, of herring. Uh, and if you've had it, if, you, if you're of the uh, bent to like caring, then great. There's other people I know that won't even look at it. Um, so, hey, yeah, food has significance. 
I'm sure you can do a great still life with some of that. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, you you um make a still life of a hamburger. I'm, I'm down. <laughs> I'm, um, sure. I'm sure so, it could be done. What's yeah, that? Been, I'm sure it's been done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by me uh, and many others before. Um, you said you so you had you up until like two years ago. you you had a career. Yeah. What was your your what career did you have? What'd you do? Was it actually health, health biology health. or was it something else? Health professional. A what? Health professional. A health professional. What what's that entail? Uh. I was uh, I was one strain of a doctor, and um, uh, in the last phase of my career, uh, I was doing it mostly in nursing homes. And I'm just I'm I there's I'm not going to do that anymore. So you are you are a uh, a nursing home home professional with uh, uh, pursuing what was that? I okay I um, there's a delay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can see that. Um, we may be in the same same time zone, but yeah, there is a bit of a lag here. Um, I um, I really don't want to go into detail about it, but I brought uh, one modality of healthcare to nursing home residents, uh, and with current conditions, I'm uh, and this stage of my life. I am not going to go back there. I'm not doing that anymore. You didn't. You didn't like it. Was, was it a? Was there one? Was there a point in your life where? It, not to uh, get into anything controversial. Uh, many of the facilities where I had worked, all too recently, were in the news. Oh wow! Of, uh, recent troubles, and I will not do that again. Was, uh, you know, forgive me, but. Uh, uh, I was very glad to bring comfort and help to many individuals, but even at best, they, it was under difficult conditions, and conditions have become more uh, fraught and possibly um, undesirable today. And I will not go back to work there. Oh man, man, that's that's got to be rough. Um, so I uh, I hope that uh, I hope that this uh, pursuit of selling art goes well. Uh, I enjoy doing the art. Uh, a lot of people uh, repeatedly told me how much they like the art that I have and how much they like my website. Uh, in fact, I did just uh, in the art storefronts world launch today. Uh, so I look forward. Awesome. Um, so when you are getting ready to, to do your artwork, yeah. right, you're, you're setting yourself up, you know, you're getting into like psychological mood, right? What does that like look like what does that entail like are, are you are you doing are you doing some push-ups drinking some protein shakes before you you uh you start picking up that pencil and start doodling or are you you know you you uh um go on amazon prime or uh, netflix and uh binge watch some old soap operas or something and then then get ready uh some of all of the above uh, <laughs> separate okay separate from the art i try to do as many push-ups a day as i can uh, like sets of like, you know, 10, 15 at a time, uh, no protein shakes. And frequently when I'm, uh, when I am drawing or painting, uh, I'll have in the background something playing, uh, the, the, uh, the audible portion of a YouTube, something like that, uh, audible, something from uh, Netflix, just not watching the picture. I do use the computer screen, uh, a lot of times I'm, I'm not drawing from life, but I'll draw from a reference picture. Uh, I will have taken a photo of something I've walked by, uh, some uh, interesting looking wall, plants, insects, flowers. I'll take a picture and I will save it and I'll use it as a reference photo. Uh, 
uh, and I'll have that on the screen on my laptop. And that is what I will draw or paint. Uh, so I'm I'm a little bit I will paint paint plein air actually be outside in front of my subject. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll do it that way. But yeah, I do all those things. Uh, I certainly listen to uh, music or uh, latest news or whatever. How many push-ups did you do today? About fifty. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, how many could you do at once? Like your all time record? 15 to 20. 15 to 20? Yeah. Straight? It's, look, you know, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, there's, uh, <laughs> I mean, look, hey, you, you know what I mean? You can go online, you can read about people that are uh, into fitness uh, and they're talking about doing 200, uh, 200 push ups to a day. Uh, or a hundred a day. Uh, I did a hundred push-ups every single day for a month. This is my transformation. <laughs> uh, kind of things. Look at my body before and after. Um, I would say, yeah, I'm definitely uh, uh, healthier for it. Uh, I think a better exercise. Yeah, push-ups are pretty standard. There's a thing called split squats, uh, and those have helped me a lot. That I've noticed uh, with the split squats, I've noticed a big difference. Uh, and the strength of my legs uh, in balance. Is is that like a, a a wide stance squat? No, you throw one leg back and you uh, and you slowly go down. Your knee kisses the ground and you come back up. Try to keep your back as straight as possible the whole way through. You do a push up to the ground. Hey, no, put yeah, sure you do a push up to the ground. You talk about squats. Hang on, live. Uh, here we go. We're going to do a, a, a split squat. I'm going to try and show you this. Okay. And you and you do those. Uh, uh, oh, look, the dog. Hmm? Yeah, Mr. Dog is here. Here I go. Okay. Uh, one, leg goes back. Okay. My knee is going down. My knee kisses the ground, and I rise back up. Okay, so like now a lunge. The other one. Now the other one. Let me get a little closer to the camera. Here we go. The knee comes no that's not it's really shown up but knee goes to the ground come back up so uh and you keep doing those and you will you will feel it in your quads yeah you feel on the front of your uh, of your thighs uh, yeah. and i have noticed that my legs are stronger with my doing that uh and that i can more easily maintain staying on one foot for quite a while not lose balance uh be able to contort myself more. Uh, I've also been recently doing more stretches. Yeah, good. But anyway, I'm, hmm? I'm, getting, the, I'm sorry, you go. Can't hear you now. <laughs> okay. I was kidding. I was making. I was oh. making it seem like I was talking about Got was it? it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um. So I imagine. Uh, uh, you know, doing the split squats is because you're putting all the load on one leg mm -hmm. and also pretty, pretty good for uh, hip mobility. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You want to make it more difficult. There's a variation called, forgive me, I didn't make this name up, Bulgarian split squats. Where, oh, I know those. Fine. It's where you, yeah. you raise your leg up. Yes. Put it on a, on a thing behind you and yeah, then you step or a chair or something. Yeah. You don't have any support. It, it, it really, it really does the, the job. I, I, yeah, I do a few of those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the, the, the most recent thing you were listening to when you were drawing? Uncontroversial, uncontroversial. Um, Probably something about watercolor on YouTube. Uh huh. I mean, What'd you, you learn on YouTube? You can find hundreds of presentations on anything you want. Probably yeah. uh, how to do an interview like this. Uh, I probably should look it up. Yeah, and certainly about uh, uh, about um, watercolor. Uh, most recently, I was listening to. I, forgive me, I cannot remember the the man's name. He's the artist that did Dinotopia. A number oh, of wow. years ago uh and he's quite an artist he's written several books about uh color and a few other things 
Uh, he's a beautiful watercolor painter. Um, and uh, I did read a bit about his story. He started out, uh, I, I, I think, biology and archaeology. Um, and he started out not in art, but in those sciences. Uh, and then he went into art. I'm, I'm fairly sure, I would bet anything that in his undergrad doing archaeology, he had to do drawings of things. He probably, in the field, had to do drawings for records of uh, different things that he saw. Uh, and he soon ended up in art, and he, and he worked with the uh, early animator Ralph Bakshi. Uh, and on from there. But anyway, getting back uh, to what you asked me about, what do I do or how do I feel when I'm starting to do art? I have had people ask, because I do fairly realistic art, uh, I've had people who have looked at some of my pieces and said, uh, with great surprise, you did that? Uh, and I had one person ask me if I went into some kind of a trance to be able to draw. No, it's, it's, uh, I think it's much more accurate to say that after making lines long enough, uh, drawing long, uh, straight lines long enough, you can do it better and better and more accurately. There are exercises, you probably know this, but there are exercises you can do uh, to uh, for drawing mm -hmm, uh, yeah. to get greater control of uh, the pencil or whatever instrument you're using. Um, and you do enough of that and you eventually, you're gonna get control and you're, you're gonna get the hand-eye coordination. Uh, and, you, and there's a practice called automatic drawing where you don't look at the paper, you don't look at the pen or the pencil, and you just, you just, you're like this. And you can do a fair job. You can certainly do an interesting job. I did an interesting one of a piano uh, a couple of days ago um, that way, just looking at the piano, not looking at the paper. Yeah, blind, blind contours is what, I'm, uh, what I call them or what they're known for. But uh, automatic, automatic drawing is another way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's all about that uh, that muscle memory, you know, building up that um, that mind muscle hand eye coordination connection, you know, build up those make those synapses firing the right way that you want them to fire when you're drawing, you know. Yeah. And um, let's see here, Howard. Who is your hero? Right now, let me, uh, Mar one sec. Here. Yeah, one, one of them is Mar Mario Andres Robinson. Uh, he's a very fine painter. Um, uh, he's current, he's uh, working now. I mean, look, out of the past, uh, uh, Sergeant and uh, uh, Wyeth, uh, but I mean, some of the guys that are painting now, Henry Casilli Jr., uh, Mario Robinson, uh, Mary White, wow. uh, they're all, uh, they're all uh, really good. Their work is really fine, better than mine. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I, you know your artist, that's for sure. You uh you uh, a, little, a little bit a little bit you do your do you research often? I'm very influenced by other things that I've seen, and it comes out in my art. And when I look at what these people have done, it to some extent is reflected in what I'm doing. Uh, they certainly give me something to aspire to. Uh, I. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really big into the philosophy of all of it, but uh, I, I certainly feel a lot uh, more attracted to uh, art that really looks like the things that we're looking at, realist art, uh, abstract, something where you need to have a guide, a, a, a uh, index or whatever uh, to decode abstract the abstract painting you're looking at does not appeal to me 
Uh, I understand, yeah, people are trying to express something, and that's wonderful, but I get a lot more out of realist art, and I'm part of that. Uh, uh, there's, I, um, the, uh, yeah, there are, there is a whole institute that's developed, uh, that's devoted to the philosophy of realistic art. Uh, there's a uh, painter, Cesar Santos, who does very classical work, uh, or, or uh, very playful with variations on classical work. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, this is what people want. He made some kind of a statement about uh, people want the realist art. They don't want the abstract art. Uh, I think that as a uh, uh, virtue signal, there are a lot of people who will tell you that they uh, love abstract or they want abstract or it's so meaningful, but I don't get it. I don't see that. I don't buy into that. Uh, I like the realist stuff. Uh, uh, I'm not, and I'm not saying uh, that I'm buying into the grandest, most florid, most intricate uh, paintings from, say, 1600 depicting the grandeur of the church, or this king, or that king. I'm not trying. I'm not making political statements like that. Uh, and I think that realist art uh, can equally well. Uh, support uh, the here and now. Uh, Henry Casilli Jr., uh, uh, he painted uh, the horror and nitty-gritty of the Vietnam War from the battlefield. Uh, Mario Robinson uh, and Mary White and many others, uh, they paint beautifully uh, regular people. Uh, they, they can, they, I'm sure they, they've done beautiful paintings of somebody who could be working at a diner or a gas station, uh, or, or just anybody in your neighborhood. Same thing with Caselli. Uh, Henry Caselli was from the ninth ward of New Orleans. Uh, I mean, uh, and, uh, they do beautiful work. I hope I do beautiful work someday. It's good. It's good to have like. Uh, uh, a heading, a measure of of people that you want to kind of like put yourself with, you know, to kind yeah. of study them and what you want. Like you, like how do you know something's good? Well, you got to have someone who's better than you to kind of like do a little compare and contrast, you know, and to, in order I, to gauge it out. Name dropping all over the place here, but have you ever heard of Proco? Yeah, I heard of him. Yeah, fine. Yeah, he's really big on the internet. Uh, a lot of teaching on the internet, um, uh, and he certainly teaches uh, fundamental classical style uh, for drawing, for drawing figures and faces. Uh, and he, look, I did not go to art school. Yeah, I'm with Palette and Chisel today, uh, but I did not go to art school. Uh, and recently, he and uh, that guy he works with, Marshall Venderoff did a series of podcasts to recreate the experience of going to art school. <laughs> uh, so you can, you can, you can set up doing your own art school or, or, or somehow in your head. Uh, was it satire? Was it like no, a joke? I, I don't think it, was, it wasn't a satire. It was pretty serious. Um, they also did a piece on um, uh, the value of going to art school and the value of not going to art school. Um, so, I mean, it, I think a lot of this talks to how you set your space up, how do you maintain your materials, what materials would you would you use, and yes, what influences yeah. would you pull in uh, to uh, uh, what, um, what influences would you use to uh, uh, to uh, in, to direct, give direction to what you're doing to your to your work, what you want to do. Um, I mean, uh, look, I really like looking at other people's art, and I, I I'm convinced that all the uh, uh, times I've ever looked at other paintings, uh, 
whether it's at a museum or in a book or whatever, uh, it's all influenced me. Somehow it's all gone in my eye and bits of it come out here and there. Uh, the oh. thing influence how I how I I throw things back, uh, and I also and I uh, it, I'm not just um, it's not like I'm uh, like the uh, the lander on Mars that's taking uh, objective pictures of everything. Yeah. Uh, when I make a painting. I've chosen certain things. I will yeah. choose to paint this bird that's taking this particular pose or stance instead of another one for some given reason. That bird looks like it's talking to me about something. Uh, that that squirrel has put one foot forward and it's holding its ground when it's glaring at me. Uh, it's saying something. All these things say something. Uh, if I paint uh, the walls of a couple of houses and the light is a certain way, uh, I'm saying something about this scene, about how it feels peaceful uh, uh, or not, uh, and uh, what that day feels like. How, what did it feel like to be there on that afternoon? Uh, so it's all in there. So you said you liked, you, you uh, fancy John Singer Sargent, is that correct? Yeah. Um, why? Uh, okay, one reason is kind of technical, uh, and the other one is, I guess, about style. Technical thing is that for years, many, many years, uh, oil, paintings in oil were considered supreme. And many people still have that feeling. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was once in a critique, I was in a critique not so long ago, uh, and my piece came up, and the guy that was doing the judging looked at it, he could see it was watercolor, and he made a comment, something like, watercolor, how could you? Uh, and I know the guy does only oils, uh, and he was saying that oils are easier, you get more control uh, with oils, but anyway, so Sergeant help bring back watercolor to be respectable. And if you look closely, and I haven't looked that much at Sargent, I should do more, uh, but Sargent uh, could put across a lot in a painting with very little. Yes. Uh, there's a very famous painting, I can't remember what, it was from Paris, uh, of a uh, uh, relatively young woman standing, I think dressed mostly in white, and if you take a look at the face, there's really not a lot of detail. Yeah. There's not a lot there, but he gets a lot across. Yeah, uh, I her, agree. Her, the, her look, her pose, uh, he communicates a lot of information with very little. Yeah. yeah if, I think you, that's a, if you that's look a, at his, look at some of his work, right, and you, and you zoom in, it's yeah. really abstract. It's just like yes. a bunch of, it's just a mess. But like you pan out, it's beautiful. Yeah. So, I, yeah. And his watercolors are really nice too. They're just, they're real good. You know, I like seeing them. Yeah. Um, did you have lunch today? Yeah. What'd you have? Um, Let's see, the vegetable, okay, I made it. Uh, I left, uh, the vegetable was um, uh, sauteed, fried uh, zucchini, red pepper, and mushroom. Wow, that's uh, with, with toasted almonds. <laughs> and uh, the main course was uh, some leftover beef. You had courses for lunch? Well, kind of, I'm just calling it that. Uh, <laughs> it was on one plate though, right? Yeah. Or do you have like four separate plates? And no, like, no, no, uh, well, you know, plate, three. Uh, What's so that? We, so to make it simple, hey, there was zucchini and there was leftover beef. Okay. <laughs> you made it seem so like, you know, special. They're like, well, it's just basically the beef and zucchini. Um, What's your favorite burger? I don't eat burgers very much. When's Pretty the last cool. time you had a burger? Hmm? When's the last time you had a burger? I don't know. Uh, 
made it home a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago? Yeah. What is your favorite way to spend the day? Um, these days, honestly, um, painting, working in the website. How many hours a day do you work on your art? Varies. Um, I would say four would be pr uh, pretty good. Oh, that's real good. I'm, I'm quite jelly of that. I wish uh, I could have four hours to myself. Um, so you do that every day, seven days a week or like five yeah. days a week? Um, four to five. Four to five? Yeah. And you take the, the rest of those the rest of the week off? No. What do you do at that time? Cooking, cleaning, yeah. walking the dogs. Yeah. Reading. Uh, what's that? Reading. Reading. What are you reading right now? Uh, let's see. A couple of different things. Um, uh, I really do try to read these art books, and um, uh, uh, I wish I could remember the author. Uh. A couple of psychologists put together a book about uh, how to effectively talk, how effectively to have conversations, how to uh, talk to people that would be opposed to your opinions and have a successful conversation. Okay. Do you think it's working? Do you are you, are you absorbing anything? I think that I think that, um, uh, I'm absorbing a very little. Very little. Yeah, but I do. I, get, uh, I get into less less uh, arguments. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I was uh, no, I wasn't uh, especially getting into before, but I think I do. It does work. Yeah, yeah. so you're more yeah. more passive with with the 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 discussion that you may or may not disagree with. Um, let me see if I can uh, figure that. Uh, Uh, right now, if I were to try and tell you some story about, uh, uh, if I were to tell you the same story that you're saying uh, uh, right now, uh, uh, you know, the same thing happened to me and, and uh And you were trying to make a point to me about something uh, that really wouldn't pay off for me to tell you a story back. What would pay off would be for me to listen to you uh, and agree with you, and then make it uh, for me to make a decision about telling my antidote or not. Uh, there may, just may, be, be, may be no payoff in the conversation, even though I might be burning up a desire to tell my story. Uh, what the hell for? Uh, uh, if I want to have a good, the point is to have a good conversation, uh, not to try and make myself feel good by telling my own personal story. Yeah, yeah. So, like, um, basically, the other person um, using your you know, past experience as like a jumping point to create analogy or a reference to their past experience that are similar, right? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, but it pays off for me to keep it to myself and let the other person tell their story. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell me make more of your story then, Howard. Make them feel good, huh? Tell me more of your story. That's my story. That was my story. That's one book I'm reading. Um uh, I don't know. I've been um, uh, okay. Last few days, I've been overly involved in setting up my website. Uh, I'm not a uh, even though I in uh, uh, in the past I was a great test taker. Uh, I got through school okay, uh, but setting up this website uh, for me was very took a long time i'm not used to uh, i don't do seo things i uh, uh 
uh, took, I had to carefully listen to all those many videos provided to us uh, for how to set up a website and uh, uh, go through all that, that back end. Um, so that's, uh, for me, uh, uh, that's where it's all gone. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's that's gotta be it. It's a lot of and labor. It, and it was absolutely as, and I'm sure it was absolutely as boring as I made it sound, but I got it done. So um you say you worked four hours, four to like you know, at tops, max level four hours of of, of painting and drawing, um, like four to five days a week. Mm -hmm. Um do you have some sort of ritual or habit i know this kind of goes back to uh like how you start but is there something that you really you do almost by default prior or during the act of your uh creating pieces creating your artwork normally yes there's a routine yeah um, what, okay what i've got that? a I, I have on my computer i have a file of pictures that I might use as the model for paintings. And I will try to go through and pick one or two out as the next pieces I'm going to do. I try to uh, have everything laid out so I can start painting uh, the uh, paper uh, that I'm going to be using. And uh, here. Uh, I try to have everything laid out and uh, let's see here we go here's uh, eh, no, there we go so a here's little studio uh, there yeah so here's a uh, this is uh, what's called hot press watercolor paper and there's my uh, doesn't hot press have more tooth to it no less oh, oh that's cold press then yeah cold press yeah, and there's there's my palette with uh, my paints, and uh, and over here this is my uh, ah, there we go, and there's the easel with cold press paper, and okay, hot press paper is considered more difficult. It's not as commonly used. Uh, uh, I don't have uh, I don't have difficulty using hot hot press paper, but it's going to give you a different quality of painting. Hot press can give you a more glowing, beautiful work. Uh, it'd be great for flowers, for something very pretty. Uh, cold press, if you want something that's more expressive, it has more tooth. Uh, and you can get different grades of cold press, including what's called rough. Uh, yeah. So if you want to do something that's more expressive, uh, and certainly for landscape and plein air, Far and away, it's the one that's used. It, cold press is, is really pretty much uh, what is used universally. Uh, but I've been influenced by some of the people that do very beautiful, glowing flowers. Uh, and I like doing flowers. So I, uh, I've i been trying it. And uh, I've had some success with that. So let's see if I... Here we go. I'm going to make everybody dizzy. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm in a room spaceship, like a spaceship. Yeah. yeah. Let's like see. I have a, you have a, oh, I know what I'm going to do. Hang on. In your room. Yeah. Hang on. Let's see. Can we, uh, uh, where are we here? Let's get the can. Uh, oh, it's the dull, the dull. Ah, here we go. There. Uh, this is one of something I did very recently. This uh, the sparrow, uh, uh -huh. and this is on hot press paper. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, there's a uh, uh, there's a uh, botanical garden close to here. Uh, they have a cafe, and of course, the birds have learned to be little beggars. And they will <laughs> sit there. Uh, yeah. so this is this is one of the little begging little birdies uh, from the cafe, uh, and uh, yeah, had that kind of stance, kind of shoulders cocked, you know, uh -huh. 
you know, you know, please give it's, it's somewhere between please give me something and uh, and I'm coming your way. Did you did you give the bird anything to eat? Uh, you, they will find they'll find the crumbs. No, I did not intentionally feed this bird. Oh, uh, you didn't like throw like uh, the bird like a half half of a sandwich. Nope, no, no salami. They get, the birds hang out there because there's plenty of food that falls on the ground. <laughs> and they, uh, they know where to get things. Free uh, food, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a fat little bird. <laughs> uh, fat bird. So anyway, yeah. So anyway, that one's on hot press paper. Uh, and uh, uh, if you're doing uh, uh, you know, your classic classical landscape, uh, just about anything else, uh, it's going to be uh, cold press. Uh, I don't know what Sergeant uh, used. Uh, uh, I just happened to uh, uh, read some stuff. I think because he, he he used a little bit of tempera paint, which I thought was, I, uh, and I think that people like uh, uh, Sergeant and the younger Wyeth, they mixed, they broke their own eggs and mixed their own tempera paint wow. uh, and, from scratch. Uh, and so I was, uh, I looked at the thing about the supplies that the uh, sergeant used. I'm not sure what kind of paper though. But uh, yeah, this paper has been around, uh, like this has been around for uh, a couple of hundred years now. And, uh, um, you, how much do you enjoy hot press more than cold press? Or are you like them kind of the same? They serve different purposes. Yeah, depends on what I'm doing. Uh, I like them both. Uh, I certainly listened to all the descriptions that said that hot press was very touchy and uh, con uh, control problems. That's what I kept reading. You have problem, have difficulty controlling your paint with uh, hot press. Uh, but I haven't, I've not found that to be an issue. Is it because the um, Maybe does, does not absorb as much? It's because of the surface. The surface being so smooth. Yeah, like it probably are you, just. Are you depending? Off. Yeah, are you depending on the tooth or not? Uh, and uh, one of the people that does a lot of hot press, uh, was it Petite Fries, I think her last name is. Uh, she said it's all about controlling the water. And uh -huh. I think she's right. If you control the amount of water in your pigment and how wet the brush is, uh, you'll do fine. Uh, and when I'm using hat press, I'll have a sponge and I will have a uh, towel and I'm constantly uh, taking a bit of the water uh, out of the brush before applying it to the paper. Uh, I will have some newsprint on the uh, uh, on the surface uh, next to me as well. And I will, uh, before touching the brush to the watercolor paper, I'll touch it to the, I'll, I'll do a stroke across the newsprint uh, so I can see uh, what's the consistency uh, what's uh, the value of the color? How intense is it? And then I might change up a little bit. I might uh, add a little more pigment, take a little, you know, make it a little more dilute, whatever. Um, so I'm testing it out before I put it on that watercolor paper. So I'm, I guess I'm exerting control ahead of time. Uh, uh, so I haven't had that problem. Uh, um, I mean, I'm just, I'm just not getting it running all over the place. I know people, when you're doing uh, cold press, uh, there's the whole romance of having the colors blend. They run into each other, getting a soft edge. Uh, you know, people just, they're just in love with playing with the watercolor and getting all those different effects like that. Uh, especially, you know, you're doing the woods and the trees in the distance. And, you know, the honest truth is that those trees are kind of blotted there a little bit. But, hey, they look nice. They're very pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, Good. You know, get a nice hazy effect going. Uh, blur it up. Hmm? You blur it up, you know. Yeah, they love, yeah, people love doing that. Um, there's one uh, uh, teacher I had. Uh, 
I know a lot of people do this. He had a toothbrush uh, with him, as well as all of the uh, conventional watercolor brushes. He had a toothbrush, and every so often we say, you know, that area, I want to warm it up a little bit more. We take the toothbrush and uh, dip it into a little bit of uh, a warmer color, and he would flick from the toothbrush. He would flick little droplets uh, onto the paper. So uh, you don't do that with, uh, with hot press. Uh, you're going much more intentionally and accurately. So I get, hey, it's, uh, what do you have a feel for? What, what do you want to do? What do you want the result to be? Uh, it's very intentional. Have you done a toothbrush thing? No. I have the toothbrush, just haven't done it. <laughs> Use the toothbrush more sometimes to clean my palate. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And that wasn't, that wasn't supposed to be a pun. A what? You do use Crest? There are all of the... All the name brand toothpastes work well. <laughs> yeah, you you use a crest to clean your uh, watercolor. Like, oh, oh man, yeah. it's got too much plaque. This 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 yeah. painting is is disgusting. Gingivitis is everywhere. You mm -hmm. got to get that plaque off it with this toothbrush, and then you got to paint on top of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so what do you? Um, oh wait, backpedal. Uh, so you mentioned that you had some critiques. Uh, what are those like? Uh, okay, I'm a member of a uh, plein air painting group, and they've been doing Zoom room critiques. Uh, they'll have one uh, notable artist, and you submit your, you know, online, you submit your work uh, by such and such time. And then there's a Zoom, several days later, there'll be a Zoom room meeting. And everybody's work gets displayed, and the major artist, the notable artist, uh, says his wise words or her wise words about your piece. They're everybody's pieces. Mm -hmm. do, you get, hmm? do, you, do you get anything from it? Do you do? You, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Um, uh, there was one where. Uh, hold on. I'm glad that you're not like uh, getting stuff outside of the room. Yeah, I'm not walking around the block. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Lower. There we go. Yeah, this delay is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, so I did this one. Uh, it, it, I wanted to work small. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to do a big one. It, uh, honestly, with these critiques, they have a deadline by which you're supposed to submit things, and I don't do things well in advance for these. Yeah. So I did this kind of thing. I said, okay, let's work small. So um, uh, he, he, did, uh, he did say a thing about the uh, foreground grass, so I guess that passed okay. Uh, but the um, – let's see, which one is it here? Uh, yeah. He said that duck, that duck was too thin. Should have been wider, mm -hmm. uh, and that the other one on the, on this end, uh, the placement of the feet was off. Mm -hmm. The feet should have been farther forward to really hold up that duck. Yeah, um, it looks like it's going to topple over for a second. Yeah, yeah. and um, and that uh, uh, he wanted to have more going on in the uh, in the uh, mid area uh, across. Uh, that I kind of neglected that yellow area is kind of empty. I, I should have done something more with it. Maybe had, a little bit um, darker. Maybe. Yeah, some gradation. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I should have had more contrast uh, with the uh, area that the that they're sitting on. Uh, I sh there should have been more gradation there. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, it is very light in the background and, and, yeah. and the foreground yeah. grass. Yeah. yeah, and let's see. This is. Yeah, this is a this is a cold press paper. Mm -hmm. uh, so and I, I'll be. I did it kind of quickly uh, to get into the critique. Do you do you do any like pre sketches, pre like uh, pre not studies? Enough. Not enough. Not enough. Uh, yeah, it's, it's laziness. I should do yeah. more more sketching uh, bef uh, before. It's very helpful. Yeah, yeah. You, you 
it might be helpful to get your just take out your sketchbook you know mm -hmm. and and out of that that four hours of, of of time you know yeah allocate 30 minutes and then work on your sketchbook and get some get some of that that uh those mistakes some of those errors out of the way you know yeah. and that way i I, re I should devote more time to sketching yeah. uh and again that uh institution uh pal and chisel uh several days a week uh they will have a uh, zoom room uh with uh a model and uh, uh, members can uh, join the Zoom room and uh, do quick sketches, uh, full figure sketches, you name it. Uh, but yeah, I should do more of that. And uh, I did, let's see, we actually did go out of the house uh, this Sunday, uh, past Sunday evening in a, uh, let's see, I don't know how this is gonna show up here. Uh, uh, we heard we heard a, a piano player and a singer, uh, so I did uh, some sketching there uh, at the venue. Here's uh, uh, yeah. is that on. charcoal? Yeah, it's it's bar charcoal. Yeah, I okay. uh, I get a lot of mileage out of bar charcoal. Uh, bar charcoal. There, yeah, compressed charcoal blocks. Compressed charcoal, yeah, compressed charcoal block. Um, mm. I find it's really uh, very useful for. Uh, uh, making drawings like that, and then this is uh, uh, this is charcoal pencil. Okay. Come on, where are you there? there. And do you do you uh, do you spray fix those so they don't yes. smudge up the sketchbook? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Otherwise they they'd be lost. Yeah. I I totally like with the vine charcoal, the soft vine charcoal and the char compressed charcoal. It, it sheds quite a bit. Yeah. And um. It's I, I try to veer away from using charcoal in like a sketchbook because I worry about that type of thing yeah. occurring. And I, yeah. I, I almost, I used to use a lot of pencils, but I don't do that anymore because of that. I just use pen, you know. Uh, but that's that's uh, that's interesting that you you chose to use uh, charcoal with your sketchbook. Yeah, have you uh, tried doing that on some of your ma major works? Just do strictly charcoal drawings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how they turn out. You gotta spray it. You gotta you gotta spray it with fix. Um, you can make you can make some very beautiful things with charcoal. Yeah. Uh, um, there were some classes I went to where uh, the teacher would talk about uh, 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 this gives a better black. This is more black. This is darker. You know, this ebony pencil, whatever. Uh, but charcoal, and for a long time I resisted. Uh, using charcoal. I really tried to stick uh, only with graphite, uh, but uh, graphite can have its problems too. Uh, if you're photographing it or trying to reproduce it, it can be very shiny, highly reflective. Yeah. Uh, uh, it bounces more light. Yeah, and I just find that uh, charcoal can, uh, uh, maybe it's a little unusual to really like those blocks of compressed charcoal. Uh, but I really like them. I, I find them really useful. Uh, oh. I can find I can do a great portrait. Uh, I can do really ex uh, ex weirdly expressive things uh, with that heavy charcoal. A lot of people uh, uh, don't like it, especially when you're, when you're beginning because of the, the size. They feel like they can't make a, a clean line with it. It you takes know? practice. Yeah. And one exercise, uh, the big exercise uh, that I was told to do when I first picked up art was to make grayscales, endless, yeah. keep making grayscales. Uh, and, and it was with pencils. Uh, and I was using every single different hardness of pencil uh, back then. Uh, you know, 8B, 6B, everything, uh, and I did an awful lot of it, and I thought, for a while I thought, this is crazy, but uh, it helped me a lot, uh, and uh, I think I got pretty good control with the charcoal, and uh, I've learned to 
leave the white areas. If you want to, if, if there's an area that you don't, that, that shines or whatever, leave it be. And, uh, yeah. uh, and, and I can, and I can find, I can, I find the charcoal, especially like I was saying, those bigger blocks of charcoal, very useful for that more than the vine charcoal. I know you can get really thick vine charcoal. Yeah. Uh, uh, Cesar Santos. Uh, I saw he did a video where he was camping. He was, he was out uh, in the mountains and he was painting. Uh, but then he had a wood fire and he picked up a large stick, like a two inch diameter burnt stick and started doing a charcoal drawing with that. Just works. Yeah. Works. He, he was kidding around. He was fooling around and he, he said so, but yeah. Do you have a um, a fond childhood m memory that you uh, look back upon with uh, like uh, like something that brought you joy when you were younger? You know, some event or action or things that you went to or like a place. You know, what what, what kind of fond memory do you have that really speaks to you going to my grandma's house where uh, she had a she always had a giant Hershey's chocolate bar those real, real giant ones uh, and doling out a little piece of that yeah they, they they have those those still, or the, those like just like back in the top back in the day they had them. This is a back in the day thing. Uh, I don't know. I'm How sure big they, was this uh, Hershey bar? You know, I was a little kid, and everything seemed giant back then. It could have just been a regular Hershey bar, right? No, no, it was, it was definitely bigger than usual. Oh, uh, that was before they called them king size. I have no idea what they called it. Um, but it was big. And that was a, that's something that uh, you look back at with uh, with joy and happiness. Yeah, it's a warm memory. Yeah, yeah. That that's nice. Thanks for sharing that. Um, do you have a a prized possession? Something that you like? We're kind of getting some into like sentimental stuff now. I have a few questions that are kind of sentimental. Do you have anything like it could be important to you, precious to you, but it could be like garbage or trash to someone else? You know, it could be like a bottle cap, you know, from Cheers. You ever, you ever, uh, um, see the show Cheers? Yeah. And uh, the the main character got his name. Well, he used to drink a lot of beer, and he had a bottle cap that he kept in his pocket because. Uh, it was the last beer that he ever had, ah. and it was very important to him to to keep that as a token or a reminder of where he was, where where he's at now, and where he was, where he's been, you know, in the past. Yeah, you have anything kind of like that? I gotta tell you, not really. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't not, really think that really like that either. Good. You know. Well, that's what I'll tell you. I will use that as a segue into introducing. Uh, when you get up here, come on. Come on. Here's my, uh, one, two, three. You're going to be a Left. second car. Okay, buddy, you see yourself there? <laughs> you going to say anything? No, you're not. You're just going to look around. Isn't that so that's Buddy? Dog? Yeah, his name is Buddy. And, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Dog. Just is just uh, so he's your like prized possession at, at the moment, you know your love and joy. Yeah, he helps. He helps. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, does does she does he have uh, uh like special treats that he likes? Fire away, yes. Yeah. Like what? Bacon? No. No. Uh, oh, there's two things. There's uh. He's kind of soft biscuits that he goes crazy for, and uh, 
Okay, uh, another ethnic food. Um, we've got some, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of this, uh, we've got some leftover matzah. Uh, yeah. Okay, fine. He thinks it's a treat. He thinks that those dry crackers are a treat, and he loves them. He knows where the box is, uh, and uh, you would never do anything special just to get get a T R E A T, would you? And I've got a spell around him. Oh, oh, fairly, oh you can't fairly, say that word. He's got a fairly good English vocabulary. <laughs> so if you say that word, uh, uh, he will light up and expect matzah or biscuits. Yeah, but no, it's T R E A T. You say that, and uh, he'll be looking around. Do you um drink coffee at all? Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite coffee, like brand, or is this like Folgers? Um, I like. Uh, there you go. Uh, ground from ground from uh, beans, and in a French press. <laughs> oh, you got a French press? Yeah. Yeah. Is that part of your morning ritual where you yeah. wake up and have? Yeah, I got a big one that makes three cups, and uh, yeah, definitely. Well, um, I don't really have much else to talk about, uh, well, well, Howard. Hey, hey. Unless you want to, I've, I've run out of questions. Unless you want to talk more about corn blight or some science stuff, I'm interested in hearing. No, I don't have. I don't have anything about. No. Hopefully, corn blight. Hopefully, corn blight's going to be in the rear uh, rearview mirror corn and not come back. I call uh, it same mod for a second. Anyway, here's. There's the other dog. Yeah, it's kind of. Is that watercolor? Yes. Ah, oh, watercolor. You should have got oils. I. <laughs> yeah. Should have, but I didn't. I you thought. Use oils, Howard. Um, for many, many years, I only did black and white. I was only doing pencils and charcoal, uh, and. Uh, uh, but now everything is watercolor. Uh, I can't remember who, but there's some fairly well-known painter who uh, does their studies in oil, uh, and uh, uh, and then their they, their final paintings in watercolor. The opposite of what people used to do. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 traditionally, you would do your studies in charcoal, mm -hmm. and you would even do. Uh, if you want to go even more tra traditional, you do it to the scale of the piece, you know, so you yeah. have, you know exactly yeah. what it'll look like yeah. when you painted it, you know? Yeah, you, you do several of them, each figure and all, yeah. So, uh, that's kind of lost nowadays, you know? I don't know if it's entirely lost. There are uh, ateliers, there's a whole movement where they're trying to bring that back. Uh, there's uh, uh, the Watts Atelier in uh, Los Angeles and another one in Florence, Italy, and uh, uh, smaller ones in other parts of the world uh, where they're trying to bring back very traditional technique. Uh, that one guy I mentioned, Cesar Santos, he, uh, he was trained at Florence. Have you thought about uh, taking any of those courses? Is there any uh, online courses or any way that, that doesn't involve traveling to them? Um, yeah, I uh, uh, through um, the institute called Pat and Chisel. Um, they uh, they they were all live in person. Everything was live and in person up until this spring, and now they're uh, switching to uh, a number of courses by Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. Trying to have a few with great social distancing. You have a few people in the classroom, uh, and I'm going to start a course, uh, a watercolor course with Dale Popovich uh, this Thursday. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's What's Dale Popovich do? Uh, he's a fairly well known watercolor painter landscapes plein air landscapes forests trees uh and like that uh which i know a lot of people love uh 
and um, and some okay. I definitely gravitate towards um, people to do portraits uh, and other things uh, locally where, where I'm based um, in Chicago. Uh, the trend is heavily towards plein air and forested landscapes. Uh, and uh, Dale Popovich is a well-known forested landscape beautiful thing and i know a lot of people just love that uh and it's funny uh i think i've got a lot a lot to learn from somebody like him yeah yeah well howard we're about to end the conversation in the oh, discussion unless you have something else to add uh not right now um uh, well, I'll tell you what, I will, uh, I'll let the world know that next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Mr. Pearson's website and I'm going to like it and I'm going to like <laughs> it on Facebook. Awesome. Um, one thing, uh, one last thing. Do you have any words of wisdom or advice for young artists or just young individuals? It could be anything. It could be about art. It could be about like, you know, life think, advice. Well, I would say it's going to be a lot about art. That um, uh, if you're organized and you have a good attitude about it, yes, you can make a living in art. You can do well with art. You can. Uh, don't listen to all the voices in the art world. Uh, that disdain making a living. Uh, you can make a living. You do have to promote yourself a bit, but that's just fine. Uh, and I, uh, but more importantly, uh, and, and why would you, even if you don't feel like doing that, why would you do it? Uh, I have heard artist after artist in some way talk about how they are happier people because they pursued art. And I think that's, uh, a pretty generally true thing. Uh, people that pursue art are happier, more satisfied, go with it. All right. Anything else, Howard? <laughs> Thanks, but no. All right, Howard. Well, How thank you. you. How about you? No, I'm I'm I, I don't have any more. I'm I'm a uh, I'm questionless. I have I'm out of things to to uh, propel this conversation forward. I was really interested about the corn blight and I had a lot of uh, insight about um, watercolor paper and uh, you threw down some some artist names that I am going to have to ask you to send to me and um, so I can maybe make some links in the in the notes for, on my YouTube channel on my YouTube channel so I can kind of uh, propel people there and then I'll probably put a link to Proco on there because you yeah. mentioned it uh and they're a good resource to look into um but yeah, as uh, uh, study drawing online go to proco yeah yeah they, they they got a lot of good insight i've i've visited them uh frequently you know uh very informative um well done um howard i really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to talk to me about your work and getting a little bit getting to know a little bit about yourself you know Right. Thank you. And I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, you're welcome. And um, let's keep in touch. Yeah. Excellent. All right. All Take right. Care. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. Bye.